Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? I made this glider 20 years ago in preparation for the birth of my daughter. I've got this M scrolled into it. Um, it has two meanings, M for McCrory and M for mommy. Well, this bench has not weathered that well, partly because I haven't taken great care of it. And my daughter's birthday is tomorrow, so it's time to rebuild it. So, let's get started. The first time I made this glider, I used plans from a woodworking magazine. I'm pretty sure it was Wood Magazine from 20 plus years ago. I know I still have that issue kicking around the house somewhere, but I can't find it for the life of me. So I have two options. One, I can purchase plans off the internet for around $20, or two, because I already have the glider, I can reverse engineer it by measuring it and figuring out how to reassemble it. So last night I, did all, I took all the measurements and now I'm going to mill the wood using a jointer and planer and then begin cutting it to width and length. This is four quarter Spanish cedar that I'm cutting with a skill saw, just cutting it to rough length and then running it through the jointer on one of the faces and one of the edges. There were a lot of pieces to keep track of. So I had them all organized along the garage wall and I've labeled them A through U. And some of the pieces were, were labeled in groups. So these are the back slats. They all had one letter associated to them. Now running the material through the planer to get a uniform thickness. So I have the bottom off and I'm gonna start with this. I have all the pieces cut to rough length and everything that I've cut is a little bit thicker than the standard dimensional one and a half inch thick pieces of wood. I figured since I've got it, uh, instead of shaving it off into sawdust, I may as well make use of it and, and make this a little bit beefier. I mean, this is strong enough, but why not? I was fortunate with the bearings. Um, I had this piece of metal fabricated for me at a metal shop, and then the bearings, I didn't know where to get those. This was back in the days before Google and Amazon, and with my 1200 baud modem, it wasn't that easy to search for things. But I was fortunate because there was a bearing manufacturing company just a few blocks from my house in Toronto. So I just went there. Uh, it wasn't a retail shop, I learned after the fact. Um, I met with somebody, explained to him what I needed, and he was really nice. He just went back to his office, got me four sample bearings and handed them to me, and, and I was free to go. So. Thank you to Killian Manufacturing in, in Toronto, in, in Etobicoke actually. Um, that really made it easy for me to, to put this together. I have all the pieces cut for the base. Uh, I've, for the bottom piece, I've run it through the bandsaw to round some of the corners. Now for these pieces, I have to run them through the table saw, through the dado set to cut some half lap joints. I've done a test cut for depth. Uh, this is nice and smooth, so I'll just run them through now. So the pieces are all cut. Um, I've cut, using a dado set, I've cut the half lap joints. I've also cut some dados down the center of these pieces. So it's ready to glue up and assemble. The half lap joint helped to make sure that everything was lined up and square. So I really didn't have to do a lot of checking.
and then I screwed it together with some deck screws. And the last step was to screw the end pieces onto the base. Here's the original base and the new base. And now I'm cutting the slats for the seats. And now the slats for the back. I use the chop saw to cut each of the seat slats to the proper length. And now it's time to do a test fit. I'm getting ready to cut the dados for the seat supports. And I wanna make sure that everything is perfectly lined up. The ends are easy, because I can just measure from the end. Um, but the one in the middle, I want to make sure that it's perfectly aligned. So what I've done is I've clamped the two pieces together and then I'm going to use the actual piece of wood to mark the thickness and then I'll cut the dado just a little bit shy of those lines and then fine tune it and make, make a really nice tight fit. I'm going to keep the two pieces clamped together and I'm also going to clamp the two pieces to the miter gauge. Um, that way everything will stay in position and perfectly aligned. Now I'll just trace the edge of the piece that I took off the existing glider and then I'll cut it out in the bandsaw. So I began this project on Saturday afternoon, uh, worked most of the day on Saturday, Sunday, and then every evening this week. Now it's Friday evening, and where I am right now is I've got the base assembled, and I've got all the pieces cut. There, there were quite a few pieces to cut. Um, the base has 11 pieces, I just did a count. Um, each side, including the armrest, has 10 pieces, so that's another 20 pieces total. And the seat and the back have another 36 pieces. So altogether, that's 68 pieces that I had to mill and cut uh, and keep track of. That's the hard part. But uh, I'm ready to assemble now. Another thing I did last night is I applied a coat of finish um, to, to several pieces, not all of them, but the ones that are gonna be a little bit harder to access after it's all assembled. So I thought it was worthwhile to put a coat on early. The first time I made this glider, I used yellow zinc screws that held up for 20 years in, in the weather. And when I unscrewed the glider, they came out pretty well. Some of them were stuck in and I had to snap them off, but they were pretty good. For, for this glider, I'm gonna use a newer screw that I don't think existed back then. In fact, I haven't seen these until this year, so I think they're relatively new. These are Deckmate screws, and they have a specially designed head that helps to make sure that you don't um, sink them in too far. So I'm gonna drill them in just flush to the surface. Um, that was one of the problems I had with my first glider. I, so they were a little bit uneven. Some of them were sunk too deep, some were just flush. Um, it looked okay, but I think this is gonna do a better job. I also wanna make sure that the sides are flat, so I'm gonna clamp the piece to the table saw before I screw in the other pieces. Thank you. 
And then the remaining two pieces, I'm gonna space them uh, just three quarters of an inch away from the center piece. So I'll just use a piece of, of melamine, three quarter inch melamine to make it convenient to space them. Now I'm assembling the supports for the seat slats. I used little corner squares to make sure everything was lined up and square. Just checking every corner. And then I'm rounding over the top of the seat slats using a quarter inch round over bit. And the same with the back slats, I'm rounding over the front face of the back slats. And now I'm doing a test fit and, and positioning each of the pieces for the back slats. And then I'll use a pencil to trace out the pattern on the back side of the back slats. And then I can take this over to the bandsaw and cut them out. And then rounding over the front face of the back slats using the same quarter inch round over bit. And now I'm positioning the seat slats onto the seat support and I've created some spacers so that everything is evenly spaced. And I'm taking advantage of the fact that it's not assembled yet to put a first coat of finish, um, especially between the slats. That's the part that's hard to get once it's assembled. And the same with the seat support. It'll be hard to get finish in there once the seat supports or once the seat slats are attached. I made the letter M on, a, on the computer and printed it out. Now I'm taping it to the center back slat. And then I have a pounce wheel set, and it's something I had, I've had for a long time that is useful for tracing out the pattern. So it's a little serrated wheel that creates little indentations in the wood as you trace it out through the paper. You can probably do this with carbon paper as well, but this is the method that I usually use. And then I trace it out with pencil just to make it easier to see when I'm using the scroll saw. And then I cut it out with a scroll saw. It's pretty easy to do, you just need to be careful and, and proceed slowly. So the seat portion is done. The next thing I need to do is start putting the back together. So I'm gonna work on this MDF panel. 
The nice thing about using this panel is that it's 48 inches wide and that's the same width as the glider. So it's convenient because I can position the end pieces right against the edges of the MDF. And then I've made some spacers. The spacing between the back slats is different than the spacing between the seat slats. These are just a little bit more than a half an inch. So I'll insert these, get it roughly set up, and then I'll fine tune it. Now with everything lined up, I just need to place this strip near the top. It doesn't really matter where, but I want to make it as close to the top as I can, because there's going to be another support down toward the armrest. I've got the armrest clamped in place, and as I was clamping it up, I decided to make a small change in the design. What I did is I put a notch in the armrest, and that way it puts a little bit less, the back puts a little bit less stress on the joint, because in the old glider, the back was supported only by the joint that attached to the armrest at the back. So if that ever gave way, the whole back would fall off. This way with the notch, uh, it provides a little bit of safety and a little bit of extra support. With the armrest clamped in place, I can lift the back out. I used glue and screws on this back support to make sure that they're well attached to the armrests. And then rounded the corners of the armrests. Cut them out with a jigsaw and then rounded them over with the router. Now we're at the final stage of the assembly. This is where we have to attach the seat to the base. And we'll do that using the glider arms. These are the ones that I'm reusing from the previous glider. Uh, but if you want to purchase these, they are available on Amazon, as well as other places, I'm sure. And the bolts just screwed directly into the bearing. This first part is easy, getting the arms attached to the seats. The more difficult part is when you try to attach it to the base because now you've got a very, very tight fit. Everything has to fit very well. Well, that's it. The glider's all assembled, gliding smoothly and it's looking pretty nice. So, would you make it?